We're $150,000 over budget, and we're going to explain right now. In our last budget video, our house was fully framed and the electrical and mechanical roughs had just been installed. We reviewed the costs that we already incurred, then we gave you the predictions for our future costs. The total of these cost predictions we still yet to have to incur comes to 157.5. Nine months later, it's time to update you on our actual costs versus our predictions, tell you why some of these predictions were off, and give you our new predictions moving forward. Let's recap where our home is in the building process. Our home is a 2,800 square foot ranch style house situated on a three acre lot in Southeast Michigan. So far our home is fully framed with some elevation details still yet to be completed. We just finished installing all the cabinets and countertops on the interior. We still have the flooring, painting, final electrical, plumbing, and HVAC yet to go. Let's start off with the costs we've already incurred. A lot of these costs we've reviewed in our initial budget video, so if you're looking for more details, check that video out. We paid $63,000 for our large three-acre wooded lot in Metro Detroit, Michigan. Because we had so many trees, we had to put $10,000 worth of land clearing into it. We paid $41,000 for our foundation. The underground plumbing and concrete floors came to $24,000. All our wood materials, our steel beams, and our framing labor costs came to $162,000. Because we live in a rural area, we have to get a well. Our well is 125 feet deep, making our well cost $11,000. Our roofing material and labor came to $19,000. We paid $31,000 for our aluminum clad windows from Weathershield. Our brick and labor costs came to $25,000. Our fireplace insert cost $3,000. We know our HVAC is going to be $15,000. We're paying three installments of $5,000, so at that point we had only paid $5,000 towards our HVAC. Then we have $23,000 for miscellaneous items. This includes $14,000 worth of engineering, plot plans, applications, and permits. $5,500 for the back patio concrete slabs. $2K for our gravel driveway. And $1,000 from our local energy company, DTE, for setting up our electrical to the house and our electrical box. This is at the point where we left you nine months ago. Our current costs were at 417,000, and we predicted that we'd be at 584,000 by the end of the build. This was about 120,000 over our initial budget. Now let's break down those predicted costs versus actuals. Our prediction for our insulation was 5,500, and we came in at exactly that. This just covered the material cost because we did the labor ourselves. This included the blown in insulation in our ceiling. Our drywall prediction was 18,000 and we came in right at 18,000. There weren't any hidden prices, any extra prices that added to that. The bid was the actual amount. We hired a crew for this and they did all the labor, all the work, all the materials. That's what is included into the 18,000, but did not include the cathedral ceiling because we ended up putting tongue and groove in the cathedral instead of doing drywall. Tongue and groove. Our prediction was $4,000, but it actually came to $5,100. And here was the difference. It mainly came down to labor. The lumber mill that we went with for the tongue and groove is able to do this process of doing a custom paint within their own warehouse. For us, that convenience of them being able to do that all at once and deliver it right on site instead of us getting the raw lumber and having to stain it ourselves was worth the extra cost. We also added in our buddy Austin who helped us and that was an additional cost that added to our original prediction that we didn't plan on but both were decisions that we made and we still feel really good about. We predicted zero dollars for Filder and Ferris was the one who actually made this happen. So he basically just called all the local excavation companies in the summer and asked if they needed anywhere to put their dirt and usually they need to clear it from the subdivisions they're digging in so they'll come and drop the dirt for free. You do have to call around a little bit though if you're trying to do this because some companies will charge you. Our septic actuals came in right as we predicted at $13,000. We actually hadn't received any quotes yet when we first made this original budget video, so we used the guidance from Jerry who's been a builder for 40 years and he estimated the $13,000 and I guess the experience paid off because he was dead on. Our prediction for our 14 foot driveway was $15,000 and it came in at exactly that. We were able to estimate accurately because concrete is usually priced per square foot. Our original stone prediction was $10,000, but our actuals came in at $18,000. 
we first made this prediction, we were set on installing or setting the stone ourselves so that 10,000 only included the cost of materials, which was the stone. Now this wasn't a decision that we made right away. As you guys saw, we attempted to put up the stone ourselves. We started here on the side of the garage, but it took us weeks and it really kicked our butts. I'm gonna throw it. I'm gonna, throw it. I'm gonna break it over my knee. This is why I wanna give up on this day. But I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> and we did keep going. After a few weeks, we were able to finish the stone on the garage portion, but ultimately we had to make a tough decision. Therefore, we decided to hire some help to finish the remainder of the home. While we were doing this portion of the garage, it was taking us so long that we actually had to take time away from our normal jobs, so we were missing out on our regular incomes as well. So financially, it just didn't make sense for us to finish the rest of the house. I guess sometimes you just have to leave it to the professionals, but I'll never forget this wall. I know all the hard work that went into that. Our original prediction for cabinets and countertops was 33,000. That was a really decent budget because we didn't want to skimp out on our kitchen. Our actuals came in at $25,000, so I'm really happy to say we saved $8,000 here. In order to get the look that we wanted and to save some cash on our cabinetry, we used a lower economic line in our laundry rooms and our bathrooms, but in order to get the look, we used a higher end cabinetry in our kitchen. For our countertops, we found this beautiful quartz from MSI, and it is a grade B countertop, which is budget friendly. And then in order to save in our bathrooms and our laundry room, we found remnants from our fabricator. A remnant is a leftover piece of countertop that's sold at a discount. So we were able to use marble in our laundry room, our master bathroom, and our powder room. And then we found this awesome leathered granite for our Jack and Jill bathroom. So in our last video, we lumped tile in with flooring, but that doesn't really make a lot of sense because we use tile all in our bathroom, on the walls, for the showers. So this time we're just gonna give you the actuals of what the tiling was. The tiling came into $11,500. Originally, we thought this number was going to be lower because we were going to do all the labor ourselves. And with that breakdown, the materials was $3,000. So if you take that $11,500 minus the $3,000 for materials, we are left with $8,500 for the labor. And just to kind of give you an idea, as you guys know, we did the mudroom tile. We did the Jack and Jill bathroom. We did the, the shower in there. So we did a lot of work ourselves. This is where you could save a lot of money, but again, the main cost for that labor came into our master, so our master labor was really where that cost came in. Our miscellaneous prediction was $5,000. That included our garage doors, our interior doors, and our exterior doors, and the actual came out to be $9,000. Main reason being is we went with a premium interior door. Still was a great value for this type of door, but we went with a solid wood knotty elder. It does cost a little bit more, but man, can you feel the difference? Our actuals came in at $13,600 more than our predictions from the last video. Majority coming from paid labor that we did not originally account for because Ferris and I planned on doing the work. This includes tile setting at eight and a half thousand and laying the stone at eight thousand. The remainder being from tongue and groove and the upgraded doors. During the summer, Ferris and I made it our goal, our mission to complete the entire thousand square feet of stone on the elevation or the front of our home. But we only got to 200. <laughs> Meanwhile, both of our businesses outside of the house started to gain traction and demanded way more time than we anticipated. We had to set the stone project aside and move back inside to tiling before we created any further delays. After tiling the Jack and Jill bathroom and the mud room, we realized that some skills are just left to some professionals with a little bit more experience. <laughs> In order to finish these jobs, we were taking less work on our personal career side and we were losing out on income because of it. Now we had to pick and choose. Some of these house projects just didn't make sense to us financially. One of those projects being the remainder of the stone. On the bright side, we did offset some of these costs from the savings from our countertops and cabinets. We had originally budgeted 33,000 and only spent 25,000. So that's a savings of $8,000. 
The total cost we've incurred so far is $541,500. Now let's review our predicted costs for paint, hardwood, electrical, plumbing, HVAC, and appliances. Our initial prediction for paint was three and a half thousand. That only included materials because we initially planned on painting the home ourselves. Our new prediction is now at 15,000 and that's because we will be hiring a painting crew to help us. Just after realizing how big our home is and how big the exterior of our home is, we realized we needed some help in this area and we didn't want to ruin the look of our home with a bad paint job. We haven't paid any costs towards paint yet, so we'll have to update you guys in our final budget video. Our future prediction for hardwood is $11,000. We figure that we have about 2,000 square foot that we need to cover with hardwood, and our hardwood comes in at $5.50 per square foot. One more thing, since we're doing the labor, we didn't include any labor costs, that was just material costs. Electrical, plumbing, and HVAC. These are still future predictions because we haven't incurred all the costs for our final statement, but we are getting closer, so we kind of have a tight prediction. We should be close on these. 19 for electrical, 17 for plumbing, and 15 for HVAC. We have incurred already 10,000 for the HVAC, and we think it's gonna be another 5,000 for the final. Again, these are still future predictions because we don't know what's gonna happen completely, but we should be pretty close on these. Our initial prediction for appliances was only $5,000, and the reason being is that we only need to purchase three appliances our range hood, our range, and our refrigerator. We already have appliances from a previous home, so that's why we only need these three. We did go ahead and purchase these appliances on Black Friday for a good deal, our refrigerator being $1,500, our range being $2,000, and our range hood being $200. These are the final remaining predicted costs that we have to incur in order to finish the home. The total coming to $70,700. This is $14,200 over our last video's predicted costs. The number one contributor being the paint at $15,000. Like we said, some jobs are worth it financially and some aren't. The actual cost we've incurred so far is $541,000. Add in our $71,000 of new predicted costs to get a total of $612,000 versus our $584,000 from our last budget video. The main contributors to that $28,000 are the extra labor costs and the extra design elements we added to the home. Solid wood, eight foot doors, 4,000 over budget. Tongue and groove on our cathedral ceiling, 1,100 over budget. Dark oak, engineered hardwood, 4,000 over budget. Extra design elements coming to a total of 9.1,000 extra over budget. The rest being the extra labor. Tile setters, 8.5,000 over budget. Stone masons, 8,000 over budget. Painters, 11,500 over budget. Labor total over budget, 28,000. Luckily, some of that being offset by our cabinets and countertop choices, along with our appliances. Countertops and cabinets, 8,000 under budget. Appliances, 1.3,000 under budget. Our total under budget savings are 9.3,000. This brings our grand total to 27,800 over our last budget video. Our total costs incurred added with our future predicted costs gets us to our estimated finished house total cost of $612,000. So overall, how has this affected our personal budgeting? Ferris and I both started out in corporate marketing and after five years of savings, we decided to take the leap and we quit our jobs in April 2021 to travel in a van for one year. During that time of travel in 2021, I was growing my media company and upon returning, I wasn't sure what my income was going to be and Lisa also started with interior design. Our initial budget was based off of the income we were making when we got home and our savings at that time. It was eight months before the build even began. It's been two years since we've been home and able to grow our businesses. Our increase in income has been the main factor at why we've been able to make these more expensive design changes and increase our budget. If our incomes hadn't increased, we would not have made these design choices. So we do have a private loan that gives us more flexibility than your standard loan, allowing us to have more flexibility in our budget. We are still comfortable with the overall budget because we are investing into our home. Since we are acting as the GCs, we do not have a builder fee, which is a lot of savings. If you're looking to build your home with a company, this is a fee that you'll definitely have to incur and it could be up to 15 to 20% of your bill. The surrounding comparable homes still support a healthy margin, even with our new predicted costs. 
Our goal behind sharing the cost of our home is to help provide some insight in the cost of your future build or even a DIY project. In our next video, we're gonna be putting the finishing touches on our kitchen and our living room. So don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.